Today, I'm sitting down with every brand of gouache that I own, and I'm putting them through the ultimate test. I have six brands that I'll be going through, and I'm going to rate them on a scale of three things, opacity, fluidity, and workability. Workability basically stands for like how frustrating are they to work with. So we're starting off with a gouache that I had actually never tried before. It was still sitting on my shelf unopened. So Turner Acrylic Gouache, this set is around $21 and it comes with every color you need to get started. Usually I'm pretty iffy with like the starter kits, but this one was really well done. I chose the Lotus Flower because it has quite a bit of layering, so for me it gave the closest feel to like if I was working on a project. Now it's worth putting in the disclaimer here that I didn't try to color match in between each Lotus because I was working with different hues of red and green in the kits and some kits just could not match. So I promise I know how to paint. It was just very disorienting to switch brands for each one. I was floored with this one because it actually beat out the brand of acrylic gouache that I normally gravitate to. It makes sense because I hadn't opened this one yet, but it was still an interesting discovery. The opacity was amazing without even adding any weight to it, and the fluidity was on par with most student grade brands. The workability was solid, especially because this is the characteristic that usually gets dropped in terms of quality with student grade brands. You know, the price is cheaper for a reason, but I was absolutely blown away, like considering to go buy a bigger set after this. The second brand we're going in with is Liquitex Acrylic Gouache. This is my favorite. I will put in some of the paintings that I've made with solely this brand on the screen. I am obsessed with the consistency of this gouache. Now the fluidity on it is awesome and that's why I love it. So it's a little more transparent, but this is a godsend if you paint something like architecture because you can see the guidelines underneath. So. I use this for all of my cityscapes because straight lines in those pieces are really important. But you can see that the coverage is still good. It's not necessarily streaky. It's just a little bit more of like a ghost transparency. So for that reason, the opacity gets a four and of course fluidity gets a five and I'm also gonna give workability a five. This is a bit pricier than Turner, depending on the pigment. It can go for around $11 a tube, at least where I am, but their starter kit of 12 is $58. So if you need something that's good for a lot of layers, I definitely recommend this one. And when I get to the lily pad portion on this one, that's where you can really see just how smooth and fluid and opaque it is. Now, we're doing a complete 180 into the worst brand that I own, which is Reeves. I really put this one in here to show you the full scope of student grade gouache, because this is the bottom of the pyramid. But why tell you when you can see the mess for yourself? Now, it is worth mentioning that these paints are about two years old, but I am also going to be using another brand later with paints that I've had for the same amount of time and they did not look like this. So, you know, maybe they just deteriorate really fast and in the beginning Reeves is nice, but I, after this, was not about to go shell out the money to see because I was just extremely disappointed. Although the paint on the Lotus may look more opaque, I had to do three layers to get it to look like this. So I did the other layers off camera, but I did not put that same effort into the lily pad here, and you will be able to see just how thin it is on the first layer. So after I was done all this, uh, I decided to give the opacity a two, the fluidity also got a two, and the workability also got a two. I I couldn't make this sound better than it was. And you'll see when all six of them are together that this is the weakest link. This set was $16, but I will give it some credit and I will say 
If you're looking for gouache that you can kind of transition to watercolor and kind of make it thinner, then this is great because this is more like watercolor to me. This doesn't feel like gouache. The time has come to test out the fan favorite, which is my 50 count Hemi palette. There are a lot of different sizes that you can buy, so I'm going to give you the price for the smallest set, which is actually what I started out with. That was the first gouache palette that I ever owned. So the 18 count is $23, and I cannot rave about this palette enough. I love switching colors a lot. I mean, I do use the entire rainbow in almost every piece that I do. So the jelly cups are so much more accessible than tube gouache, you know, having to squeeze it out every time. So I find that jelly gouache is easier to blend and it takes more time to dry, which makes it easier to work with when you're like blending gradients or something like that. So this was the palette that I use the most in my online course that I teach called Beginning with Gouache. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can check out the description for details. So for opacity, I'm gonna give it a four. Fluidity is a three, just because it's a bit of a dance to get the consistency right. And workability gets a five. We have a small business wildcard in the mix called Senex Supplies. They reached out to me in the very early days of their business when they were just starting to sell their artist gouache. I've had this stuff since I was in Colorado, I believe, so it's been sitting around for over a year, pretty untouched. And I was shocked when I opened it and the paints were still in perfect condition an entire year later. The consistency was the exact same as the day I got them. A tin of this is $15, but you get 30% more than that huge bottle of Liquitex that I showed earlier, which is just mind-blowing. So for them to be in such beautiful condition a year later, I definitely feel like the investment is worth it because of the sheer volume you get. So it layered beautifully, it didn't reactivate, it was just by far the least stressful experience out of all of the brands that I tried today. So for that reason, it's going to get a 5 for opacity, a 4 for fluidity, and a 5 for workability. So I'm teaming up with Cenex for a giveaway. I'll have more details in the description, but all you have to do in order to enter is to be an active subscriber in the US and to comment how you fell in love with painting. I will pick a winner seven days from posting this video. Here we are with another fan favorite, and this is one of the most commonly known brands of gouache, I think, and that is Arteza Gouache. They're a very affordable student grade brand and they definitely don't sacrifice quality. I feel like it was the runner up in this test. So this is tube gouache and I'm a big fan of the consistency. These are nice when I go all plein air painting outside because otherwise bugs get in my jelly gouache. I learned that lesson the hard way. A set of 24 is $25. It is very easy to layer and it doesn't reactivate, all that good stuff. So pardon my camera here because it was dirty and I didn't realize and I was kicking myself while editing, but it is what it is. So this one gets a four for opacity, a five for fluidity, and a five for workability. And that concludes our test. So most of these are pretty solid brands and you can find direct links to all of the products that I talked about on my Amazon storefront. I want to make a full painting tutorial next, but I can't decide what subject to do. So let me know what you wanna learn how to paint next. And until next time.